Time to do the brakes. I'm gonna do the front and rear. I got a couple of brake kits off the interwebs. Should have new pads, new rotors, and uh, new pads also for the parking brake in the rear. So let's dive into this, see what kind of trouble we can get into. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so now we got the two bolts holding the caliper off. As you can see, it's dangling by the brake line. Not good. So, I need to kind of suspend it in a way and uh, either get some thick wire or something I always use is a metal coat hanger. The hook seems to come in pretty handy. So, And on with the new. I don't know if these are the fronts or the rears. I'm thinking these are the rears. Yep. Parking brakes. Brake parts galore. Alright, so here's new versus old. If you notice on the new brakes that there is absolutely zero rust on it, which is due to a protective coating they put on, really critical that you get some brake cleaner, really clean those off before you start using them. Otherwise it can affect the wear on the, on the pads. Also, the thickness comparison, you might look at these fronts and think that, ah, they're not too bad, there's still plenty of material left on them. And well, in actuality, they're really not bad. I could probably get away with just having these turned down, but at 100,000 miles on my truck, you can start seeing the scaling that's going on a little bit. That might be brake material, might just be rust, but I figure at this point, 100,000 miles, it's better to go ahead and just get all new equipment. It's one less thing I have to worry about. So, that is what I'm going to do. And I might keep the old ones kicking around for paperweight. You never know. Could make a good stand for something. Just weld on a pole and voila. Okay, as for what was packaged in these new brakes, you have a few different parts. You obviously have the rotors. You have your pads. We'll compare thickness of the new ones and the old ones. These are obviously the new ones. You notice it's got a slit in it. What that's for is to release gas vapors. When these pads are on here and they're trying to stop and they're putting all that pressure on they're squeezing so hard gas vapors can actually build up these slots are to allow those to escape you ever uh, 
might have heard, you know, drilled and slotted rotors. That same principle. It's to get the gases out of there. Um, I've seen drilled and slotted ones for this Jeep, and I considered buying them, but I've been in some pretty scary situations where I've had to slam on the brakes with this vehicle, and it will stop on a dime, even with the mud tires that I have on it, which are pretty heavy. So I'm really happy with these, and so if I'm happy with it, I'm not going to deviate from it and try something else. So I stuck with the factory stuff. Um, you also have all new shims and uh, all that fun stuff as well that we got to put on. So let's dive into it. So the next step is we're going to get these old pads out of here. So you can see they can just pop right out. That's an air compressor. Excuse that. And that pops right out. When you look in here, see these two guys. These are actually called pistons, and there's two of them, um, which is actually really good for a factory setup. A lot of cars and vehicles in general only have one. This is almost kind of a, a foolproof way of doing it. The pads are so wide that if you just push in one area, it can cause deflection, and the brake pad can only get pushed in in the middle. Um, vehicles, sometimes you'll just see one big one. You know, it works. This way, you've got two. Even if one kind of freezes up or goes bad, you've still got another one pushing and, and activated. So I really like this. I think in the rear, it's just single piston. But uh, you'll see this in a lot of performance setups, too. Actually, you'll see anywhere I've seen up to six, I believe. So anyways, that's just a little explanation there. Our next step is we need to we'll pull these little metal tabs out. We'll get these replaced. Get them out. Anyways, I'll fiddle with this and I'll get these out. Um, the other thing we want to do is we want to move this back in line because the new pads are going to be thicker than the old ones. So we want to push these pistons back. And I've got a nifty little tool that I think I paid like $5 for. And it's this guy. And basically, let's figure out how we can get it in here. Got our pads here. These are the old ones, these are the new ones. I think something we want to check on is where. Obviously, there's a lot of material left on these, and again, I probably could have gotten away with using these for a lot longer. But again, I'm at 100,000 miles, and I'm just doing a bunch of preventative maintenance all at once, so I don't have to worry about it. I wonder when they're going to go out. But the reason we had to push the calipers back, just compare the thickness between the two of these. I'm going to look how much material is gone if you compare apples to apples. So if I tried to put these on a thicker caliper with thicker pads and didn't push the calipers back, the you know the pistons, there is no way that this would have squeezed over it. You know, I would have it would have been too narrow, you know, try to go over it and it's only this far apart just because of the material missing. So now we're set to go and we can put these new pads in. Alright, so, and there is a, an orientation, the way these go in, you can't just put them in either way. Obviously, this is going to match the outside curvature of the rotor, so we're going to put them on facing this direction. If you notice, there are guide plates, little cutouts, to allow you some ease of sliding these guys in. There's one. further I just want to make sure the caliper fits it does I'm gonna clean them off and then we can install everything all right so we got some uh, brake clean here it's just generic stuff I picked up at the auto parts store start cleaning off the back guys all over the clean back of the rotor.
Johnson. So I also wanted to show you guys the old fashioned way of doing this, which is with hand tools, not air tools. Because a lot of y'all might say, man, I wish I had air tools, must be nice. As I've been there before and it stinks. Anyways, a little trick of the trade. You know, you saw me using this extension here on the back of the caliper from underneath just because it made it easier to get there with the gun. Don't try to use an extension if you're going to be using just a, like a wrench or a breaker bar because this will just twist and twist and twist and you'll just absolutely be defeating yourself. You can get to this without using a uh, extension, so I'm going to show you that. Another little trick to the trade is say you don't have a breaker bar <coughs> and this thing is just not budging, something you can do is if you just have a regular you know, ratchet wrench and only goes to here and you're not getting much leverage, put a pipe over the end of it and you can get a lot more force that way. Also, if you can't do that, you can also use an open-ended um, or a closed-ended uh, wrench and you can slide it over the side and I'll show you how and uh, get more leverage that way. Something else I forgot to go over is I uh, only used two sockets on this. It was a three-quarters inch wrench in order to get the lug nuts off or you can use a wrench that came with your Jeep or this is a 13 16 uh, for the two caliper bolts. And uh, yeah, that's all you really need, that and a wrench. And in terms of how to get more leverage. Obviously, I don't have a wrench big enough, but if you've got one to fit over the end, you can do that. And then when you push, you've extended your wrench that much further, which means you're getting more leverage, which means you're getting more bang for the buck uh, in the amount of energy that you're putting out. So, just a little trick for the trade. Okay, and to prove that this can be done with hand tools, Got a breaker bar on. Right. Some good old-fashioned muscle. Anywho, prove that it can be done on the bottom. Do these rear brakes. Put the back end jacked up on jack stands. Always leave the jack under it just as a fail safe. Now it's time to get all NASCAR. I run these wheel spacers. Everybody asks me because uh, I've got the budget left right there. You can see the spacer. Uh, did I actually need these wheel spacers? Honestly, I don't know. I do rub on the front a little, but I plan on banging that out and I'll do a video on that. But I just like the the wider stance. That's the biggest reason I run them. So, anyways, everybody asks. That's my answer. There's one. So, on this side, there's this little tab, it's right here, just had to push down on it and it pries right off. So, you see these pads are actually pretty good shape. I changed them out too long ago, but I didn't have the uh, rotors turned down, and they're pretty worn out anyways, and my parking brake isn't as tight as it used to be, so I'm just going to change out everything. So, this is your actual parking brake. You can see it works similar uh, to a drum brake on the inside of your disc. So this is actually your emergency brake, parking brake, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're going to be changing out these pads in addition 
to the ones on the main caliper. And this is the inside of the uh, brake pad, or the, excuse me, uh, you can see this is where the park and brake rides. So, it's basically two brakes in one. I don't know if this is the right order or not, but I'm going to start with this back spring. I always lay everything out in the order that I took it off. Just got one more spring over on the other side. This part's hard. Wait till we go to put them back on. As you can see, I've laid out all my bits and pieces and know the orientation of everything. Well, guess what? That's really going to help out with installing all the new pieces. So basically we have uh, these two slider rails and the brake pads for the main brake system. And here's where the little slide pads are. We'll have to take those off. And then this is all of the parking brake stuff. So these little pins all clamped together. To the backing plate to help hold it on. You can kind of see the hole there. And uh, springs hold it tight on each side. The only piece we are going to reuse is that guy right there. Again, I kept that in the same orientation not to mess it up. So, let's get to it. center all right so got the uh, brakes mostly done here I did have to kind of improvise a little bit this little guy I ended up having to reuse because the head twisted off the other one and uh, as you can see all the scrape marks yeah it's about an hours worth of trying to get that spring on just as bad as I thought it was going to be I ended up actually taking a drill and drilling down at an angle because I'd get it on halfway and it'd sit on the lip and then pop off even if I tried to hammer it on it would still pop off so I drilled an angle so it would just be a sharp edge and it could just slide over that ridge and go straight down and that's what actually got it on so let's go on to uh, finishing this job up because I'm done there we go got one off if you notice these pads aren't that uh, look that bad, they look relatively new. It's because they are. I just changed them not too long ago, but I didn't turn the rotors down or anything like that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so a problem I kind of had when I was trying to put it all back together was I was trying to get this on, it wouldn't fit. I realized I had to pull this uh, little boot out right here because it was catching right in there. 
like a silly goose. Had to do it on the top and bottom, so that got it on. On the bottom, there's actually a rail right here, or a notch in this one, so you set it on it, and then you rock it forward, and it'll pop in, and uh, this top one will clip on.